Sussex Police Authority was due to meet on the 13th of October 2011. A few days before that, I looked at the agenda for the meeting and was puzzled by Item 15, Report of Professional Standards Committee, held on 29th of September 2011. The last such meeting I had seen listed by the authority had been on the 27th of July. So I looked at the report itself, available on the authority's website, and found that it actually covered three meetings. That on the 27th of July, attended by five of the eight committee members, was preceded by a private meeting called Inspection of Complaints Register, and an extraordinary 28-minute meeting on the 29th of September was attended by four of the eight members. The first meeting was the subject of my video called the Sussex Police Super Show. The private meeting evinced a new level of pointlessness in the activities of this committee. They meet four times a year. At best they look at two or three complaints from the public each time. On this occasion they looked at none. The report states, In place of the routine inspection of complaints register, the committee heard an explanation from Professional Standards Department PSD case workers about the process of following a complaint from beginning to end. The extraordinary meeting introduced a new topic for the committee to concern itself with. The extraordinary meeting was called in the wake of the revelations relating to the Metropolitan Police Service's relationship with News International. The committee sought a reassurance that a robust process for dealing with the offer of hospitality and gifts is in place at Sussex Police. Wishing to do my bit for the cause, I emailed Sussex Police immediately. Then a few days later discovered that there is a webcast available of the extraordinary meeting, which we'll look at first, featuring the chairman and the person who oversees freebies. So we have basically one agenda item, uh, and that's item five. And this extraordinary meeting of the committee has been called as a result of primarily external events, particularly those in relationships between the Metropolitan Police and News International. And on that, uh, I understand that at least one newspaper has asked for a copy of the Forces Hospitality and Gift Register recently. So the objectives of this meeting are to enable the committee to get an understanding of the Force policy and processes for authorising, recording and reviewing hospitality and gifts offered to officers and staff. We need to reassure ourselves that the Force has a robust set of processes in place to ensure that officers and staff are not put in a position where there might be doubt as to how they might subsequently deal with an individual or a company. Uh, I'm pleased that Marion Van Thorpe, Director of Human Resources, who is currently responsible for the oversight of the Registers Administration, is here to introduce the paper. I think it's worth mentioning there, are, there is more than one register. Um, each division um, uh, main, and or department maintains its own register, plus there's a register that's, that's held for chief officers and the executive staff unit. So there's actually quite a number of them managed across the force. I think typically you'll find on the divisions and departments that what we're looking at is um, quite small tokens of appreciation from grateful members of the public or people that feel they've had a particularly nice service. Um, bunches of flowers, a box of chocolates are not are not untypical, and I think there's a level at which we feel that's, um, you know, respectful and uh, uh, and uh, helpful to accept those and um, to uh, to recognise that people are sometimes very grateful for the service that we provide. So I think this committee had already um, was wondering if it might be more helpful for the hospitality register to be managed from within the professional standards department. And I think that, together with the informal feedback we had from the HMIC, it seemed to make good sense that uh, we would bring that together, and we've consulted and uh, agreed uh, with your support that that would be a, a sensible way forward and for that management uh, of um, the hospitality register along the lines I've suggested of having a, having a central database readily reviewing um, those, uh, uh, picking up on queries, occasionally checking if uh, everything's been properly recorded could um, happily go over and be managed from within PSD. We are planning having uh, reviewed and, uh, and improved our recording to produce a full publication of hospitality registers to go on the internet from next month from October. 
In case, like me, you found some of that difficult to follow, I'll try to summarise or print out important points. There are separate registers for each division and department and for chief officers and executive staff. I think typically you'll find on the divisions and departments that what we're looking at is um, quite small tokens of appreciation from grateful members of the public, people that feel they've had a particularly nice service, um, bunches of flowers, the boxes of chocolates are not are not untypical and I think there's a level at which we feel that's um, you know, respectful and, uh, uh, and uh, helpful to accept those and um, to, uh, to recognise that people are sometimes very grateful for the service that we provide. The hospitality registers will in future be managed from within the professional standards department and there will be a central database. Starting in October 2011, a register will be published on the internet. As I mentioned earlier, before I knew of this webcast, I had emailed Sussex Police. I used a Freedom of Information request form on the police website to submit the following on the 9th of October 2011. I would like to know whether in 2004 PC Francis of Hailsham was offered a gift by ex-policeman Clive Maybury of 15 Blatchington Mill Drive, whether a gift was accepted and whether or not this was recorded in the Force Hospitality and Gifts Register. I think such an offer likely because Maybury, who had had a fence illegally erected on my property, stated in Eastbourne County Court that he gave McAlpine site manager or foreman a bottle of whisky for his help in arranging that and Maybury was presumably the author of a witness statement that I was not allowed to see, though it had led to my arrest in August 2004, the destruction of one of my cameras, and the deliberate sabotaging of both my computers. Two days later, my request was refused by Roger Brace, Freedom of Information Disclosure Officer, who said, Under Section 45B1 of FOI, we are not obliged to confirm or deny whether we hold the information you have requested, as such information is exempt under Section 40 of that Act. Is that true? Section 40 comes in Part 2 of the Act, exempt information, and states that the duty to confirm or deny does not arise if giving such information to a member of the public would contravene any of the Data Protection Principles or Section 10 of the Data Protection Act. According to that Act, the first Data Protection Principle is Personal data shall be processed fairly and lawfully. Section 10, subsection 1 says that subject to subsection 2, an individual is entitled to stop a data controller processing any personal data about him if it is likely to cause substantial damage or substantial distress to him or to another, and that damage or distress is or would be unwarranted. Section 10, subsection 2 says that subsection 1 does not apply in a case where any of the conditions in paragraphs 1 to 4 of Schedule 2 is met. All four of these paragraphs are concerned with the first of the data protection principles personal data shall be processed fairly and lawfully. So the Freedom of Information Disclosure Officer's reason for refusing my request is unsound, unless he knows that any relevant data was not processed fairly and lawfully. I shall not be pursuing the matter, however, as I know that some of Sussex Police's data is processed by dishonest and corrupt officers. And I know that police officers who filed thoroughly dishonest records about assaults on me by ex-policeman Maybury would not balk at forgetting to register gifts. Whether they would need to in future is under consideration. Agenda item 15 of the authority meeting on the 13th of October was the report from recent meetings of the Professional Standards Committee. For the conclusion of the authority's agenda item 15... A pre-arranged interchange on the subject of the committee's agenda item 5 was to take place. To put that interchange into context, I'll quote from a couple of paragraphs. 2. 1. The force has an obligation to record all gifts and hospitality received by or offered to the force. 4. 1. 
Officers and staff members are advised that all offers of gifts or hospitality must be reported and permission to partake in the hospitality or to retain the gift must be sought from the individual's first-line supervisor. The overweight councillor from Hastings, who is also a magistrate, is invited to speak. Godfrey. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just the thing about gifts and hospitality. Um, on the, both the County Council and the Borough Council I'm on, there's kind of an amount of money, or equivalent value, £25, per under uh, below which you don't have to declare anything. I, say, I don't know if you have something like that, but I think you need to have something like that, because if somebody gets a box of chocolates, for example, or a bunch of flowers, if you want to go through all this kind of palaver, to be honest, all this work, declaring it, do you know what I mean, where it's a de minimis really in the, in the kind of real terms. Um, and what I would think is, if you have got a value, an estimated value, I think it would be worth doing. So just to reduce the bureaucracy really that's inevitably incurred. Otherwise somebody gives you a cup of tea, do you know what I mean, are you declaring that when you get a cup of tea in somebody's house? Do you know what I mean, it's, you know, it becomes nonsensical if you're not careful, it's political correct, it's gone mad. So perhaps the committee hasn't already looked into that in due course. I think the Deputy Chief Constable has an answer. As the new owner of the uh, policy on this one, uh, I'll ensure that that's looked into as a sensible way of reducing bureaucracy and maintaining a balance of actually what it, we're looking at here is quite important, not just the banal. Thank you very much for that suggestion. For anyone wishing to recognise particularly nice service from Sussex Police, while avoiding the possibility of being charged with attempting to pervert the course of justice, Let's replay what the Magistrate and Deputy Chief Constable said. You should check that anything below £25 will go unrecorded and probably should not show how very grateful you are more than once a day. On the, both the County Council and the Borough Council I'm on, there's kind of an amount of money, or equivalent value, £25 for a variety, uh, below which you don't have to declare anything. I, say, I don't know if you have something like that, but I think... You need to have something like that, because if somebody gets a box of chocolates, for example, or a bunch of flowers, if you want to go through all this kind of palaver, to be honest, all this work, or declaring it, do you know what I mean? Where it's a de minimis, really, in the kind of real terms. Um, and what I would think is, if you have got a value, an estimate value, I think it's worth doing. So just to reduce the bureaucracy, really, that's inevitably incurred. Otherwise, somebody gives you a cup of tea, do you know what I mean? You need to declare that when you get a cup of tea in somebody's house. Do you know what I mean? It's, you know, it becomes nonsensical if you're not careful, it's political correct, it's gone mad. So perhaps the committee hasn't already looked into that in due course. As the new owner of the uh, policy on this one, uh, I'll ensure that that's looked into as a sensible way of reducing bureaucracy and maintaining a balance of actually what we're looking at here is quite important, not just the banal. Thank you very much for that suggestion.